Hey everybody, James with TFB TV. Today on TFB TV, I have the Bond Arms Bullpup. Very excited about this one. This is right up my alley. It's a single stack nine millimeter. This one has an alloy frame and a stainless slide, and it's got a very unique design that we're going to talk about. But I'm here at the St. Bernard Indoor Shooting Center in New Orleans, the best indoor range in New Orleans, and I'm going to put some rounds through this thing. Let's see how it does. All right, gang, before I get to the shooting impressions, let's talk about the Bond Arms Bullpup. What is it? What does it do better? Why does it exist? What's the meaning of life? I can help you with almost all of those questions, and that's what I'm aiming to do here. The Bullpup is called the Bond Arms Bullpup because the action of the gun, the feed ramp, is about as far back as it can possibly get. It's about an inch further back than your standard Glock or any other auto loading pistol that you're used to, the Smith & Wesson Shield, for example. So the, the action itself is virtually behind your grip hand, virtually behind the trigger. And even though you load the magazine into the grip, all the rounds go nose in, ass up. And the, the slide actually comes back. You have a claw that retrieves that round, rips it out of the magazine, travels rearward a little bit, and then loads it up into the feed ramp. So that allows this crazy contraption, allows the gun to have the same size barrel as say a Glock 43, but overall it's more than an inch smaller. So you get the smallest possible package, but you're going to get the same terminal performance from the Bond Bullpup. Plus, with the Bullpup, you're getting seven plus one versus six plus one with most comparable single stack nine millimeters. That's pretty cool. So I'm gonna go Dad Reeves on you real quick and refer to my post-it note that has these interesting specs comparing the Bond Arms Bullpup nine millimeter, which is a seven plus one, to the Glock 43, one of my favorite carry guns, which is a six plus one. The Bond Arms Bullpup has a 3.35 inch barrel. Compare that to the 3.4 inch barrel on the Glock 43. Now, notwithstanding the fact that they have virtually the same size barrel, you're looking at a 5.1 inch overall length on the Bond Bullpup versus a 6.26 inch overall length on the Glock 43. So you, again, you're talking about a lot smaller package. Weight similar with the Glock 43, you're looking at 16.23 ounces. With the Bullpup, you're looking at 17 and a half ounces. And what's pretty incredible about that is with the Bond Arms Bullpup, you have an alloy frame and a wood grip set versus the polymer frame from the Glock 43. So they're almost identical in terms of weight. Now they didn't have the specs in terms of the width for the Bond Arms Bullpup, and that's something that's really important to me. I couldn't find it on their website, couldn't find it in their manual, so I got my trusty old caliper out and I measured it and the width, the overall width of the actual frame and the slide themselves less than an inch. I mean, it, it was like 0.97 or 0.98 inches thick um, if you had thinner grips. So the grips, actually, those wood grips, a lot of people like them. I'm not a big fan of chubby grips. I would have liked rubber or G10 better on these, and I'm sure that somebody's going to make them, if not Bond Arms themselves. But you're looking at 1.3 inches thick for the Bond Arms, the wood Bond Arms grips. But everything else on the gun is one inch thick. You're talking one inch thick from the top to the bottom. It only gets thicker at the grip, and you can change those grips out. The Glock 43, on the other hand, 1.06 inches, so not a huge difference, less than a tenth of an inch between the two, but it's interesting to note and something you guys probably want to know. So on paper, why even buy a Glock 43, right? Obviously, I'm being facetious. Because of the design implements, because of the way the bullpup works, there are certain compromises that needed to be made to accommodate this unorthodox design. So there are trade-offs, right? Now we'll just get this one out of the way because I want my price guys to stop watching the video. You know, there are people who are like, it costs how much? Exit out. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys that opportunity right now. You're looking at, I think MSRP is 1099 on the Bond Arms Bullpup. So you're looking at a rack, give or take 
a thousand bucks if you want a Bond Arms bullpup. Now, I'm not upset at that, and you guys know that. I'm, I kind of have a reputation for being a little bit of a snob. Um, I'm not mad at that because when you look at the build quality on the bullpup and when you look at the design, we actually took it apart and had a, a good look at it. You're looking at top quality design, top quality build, and these are limited edition. They only make 150 a month, and once they're gone, they're gone. Um, I don't know how long Bond is going to be making these guns. So a thousand bucks, give or take. If you like the design, if you like everything that I talked about in terms of the overall dimensions, if you want the smallest possible deep carry nine millimeter that also gives you seven plus one rounds of nine millimeter, then you know maybe a thousand bucks might be worth it to you. But I hate when I get comments, like I posted a picture of it on Instagram and there are people who are like, for a thousand bucks, it better be 100% reliable. And we're gonna go there because people have been complaining about reliability. But you know, for a thousand bucks, it better eat everything that I feed it, da, 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 da. Yeah, you know what? I get it. You know, for a thousand bucks, of course, you want it to be reliable with everything. For a thousand bucks, I want it to make my father love me again. But I mean, it's just not going to happen. You look at the constraints of the design, there's certain things that just aren't going to work. So now we've talked about all the good stuff, let's talk about the drawbacks of the design. No bolt hold open, or last round bolt, hold, slide hold open, slide lock. I've seen people complain about the reliability, but it's almost as if they didn't read the manual or they didn't go to the website and see that Bond Arms tells you that there are certain approved types of ammunition which will work with a bullpup, and there are certain types of ammunition that don't. Love it or hate it, that's just a consequence of the design. It's not that picky. If you go to the website and you see all the different types of ammo it accepts, I was using Federal HST 124 grain, worked flawlessly. But it's important to note, as long as I was using approved ammo, it was 100% reliable. Me and all the other guys that shot it, if it was on the approved list, it was 100% reliable and that's all you can ask for. Now I used 115 grain V-Crown, SIG V-Crown, which was not on the approved list. That did not work. Yeah, so I had a little lock up there with the 115 grain SIG V crown. I used 124 grain Federal Syntec. That did not work. So I think we're going to have problems with this. This is the new Federal Syntec ammo, which is kind of cool because uh, it's, there's no lead in the primers. There's no metal in the jacket. It's a polymer jacket, but I think this little uh, boutique gun is gonna have a hard time with polymer. Yeah, had another lock up. It does not like, guys, it doesn't like the Syntec. I used 124 grain hollow point Ventura munitions ammo and 124 grain regular ballpoint Ventura munitions ammo. Both of those weren't on the list, but they worked perfectly. They worked perfectly. And not only did the HST work perfectly and the Ventura munitions ammo work perfectly, but it shot pretty dang well. Holy moly, that actually shot really well. I'm gonna show you guys this green circle in a second. I'm gonna shoot in the same green circle 10 yards. See that green? Circle there, fellas. That's two mags. That, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. And that was with the Ventura Munitions 124 grain hollow point. And I was really surprised by that. So you have people that say, look, man, for a thousand bucks, that thing better eat all the ammo I give it. And you're kind of missing the point. You're talking about a very boutique Gucci design. This is a gun that's been engineered to be as compact as possible and there are certain drawbacks that you just have to live with. If this is what I was looking for, I'm totally willing to accept it. Okay, it'll shoot 124 grain Federal HST. Do I need anything else? Not really. Okay, great. You know, good, great, grand. It works with some of the best range and defensive ammo on the market, so who cares? Like, if it won't shoot Wolf, whatever. I, I don't care. Another thing I've seen people complain about is the recoil impulse. Now, first of all, superficially, I would say it would probably be a little bit better uh, in terms of recoil impulse 
if it did come with, say, rubber grips. Wood grips, just uh, for me, don't do anything in terms of reducing felt recoil. However, again, we're talking about another necessary consequence of the design, and that is that it has a recoil spring that straight up looks like it came out of a ballpoint pin. That's the only way they can get this thing to work, right? They don't have enough space. They don't have enough runway forward of the trigger guard to have a standard recoil system. So they've got to use an offset recoil spring and recoil spring guide rod, and it's got to be really thin since it's offset. It's running alongside the barrel, so it's got to be thin. Now what's nice makes it very easy to chamber around. It's unnatural. There's your upside. There are a lot of people who worry about, like for example, chambering around in a car PM9. That is a chore. If you don't grip it and rip it, you are not going to get around chambered. With this, that's no problem. With the bullpup, you've got great spring pressure out of that 7 plus 1 magazine. You get it all the way to the rear easily, let go, and it chambers. It, it, so there's the upside. The downside is there's going to be more felt recoil. Again, necessary consequence of the design that you have to live with if this is what you're looking for. Double action only. I hate double action onlys, but this one does it well. Again, necessary consequence of the design. And still, nice shooting. Nice shooting little gun. Notwithstanding the fact it's got a very long trigger pull and very long reset. There it is, all the way out. You pretty much got to come all the way up, but I mean, part and parcel with the design. It's actually the rear slide cover that acts as the hammer. So when you pull that trigger, the entire rear of the slide comes back and then slams forward into that firing pin. You can see trigger pulls a little long, but this is a double action only gun. So I'm staging the trigger a little bit, just giving me Pretty decent accuracy for a pocket pistol at 10 yards. But that's obviously the only way they can get it to work because there is not a lot of space back there because of how far rearward the action's been pushed. But that said, they somehow managed to give it like a six and a half or a seven and a half pound trigger that's really not all that heavy, albeit a little bit long. And that reset is a full reset, brother. You are coming all the way back home. So you're not gonna have lightning fast splits. However, I will say this gun shot very, very well, better than many of the single stack nine millimeters that I've reviewed on TFB TV in the past. Very easy at 10 yards to put up a fist size group with defensive ammo, with Federal HST, shot extremely well. I was in fact blown away at how well it shot, notwithstanding the fact that it's got this double action trigger that's a little bit tedious. The strategy that worked for me was staging the trigger a little bit, getting it back there, getting it back there, getting it back there, and then whenever, then making sure, double checking your shot, and bringing it back all the way and letting it go. It doesn't prompt you the way a Glock prompts you when you feel all that take up. It's a nice even trigger pull, but you kind of know, especially when you have the back slide cover coming back, you kind of know when it's about to let loose. And so you can stage it a little bit, actually made it very accurate, albeit a little bit slower than I would like, but accurate. But I've got to say that the Bond Arms Bullpup is a welcome design. I applaud it. As far as deep carry goes, this is as good as it gets. You can conceal this thing in your hand. You can literally cover it up with your hand. It's amazing how small they've made this gun. When I index it, my finger, my trigger finger, actually pushes out like half an inch past the muzzle. It's absolutely wild, yet it still has the same terminal performance as the much larger Glock 43 while also giving you an additional round of capacity, even though it's thinner, about the same weight, and over an inch shorter. That is impressive. Are there drawbacks? Yes, but they're necessary drawbacks. It isn't like the gun's a piece of shit, or it's totally unreliable, or they did something wrong. It's just something that comes with the design. And what do I mean by necessary consequences? As far as I see it, there's no way that they can do an offset recoil spring in a gun that thin and make it more robust. As far as I can see it, there's no way for them to make this gun take every single type of ammunition on the market. As far as I can see it, there's no way to make this gun significantly less than $1,000 but still perform at the same level. As far as I can see it, there's nothing they can really do about that double action trigger being long, although they have made it very smooth and very manageable. So what I'm trying to say is what you're getting is a gun for a thousand bucks. Yes, it's kind of expensive. It has some idiosyncrasies that you have to live with. They're necessary components of the design, but it is the smallest gun and it performs very well. So 
I say good job. I am for the Bond Arms Bullpup. It's not going to be for everybody. We're talking about a very narrow niche, but I've seen a lot of negative reviews and I feel like it was incumbent upon me to come out here and tell you guys the upside. And I hope this was informative for you guys. Thanks a ton to Federal and Ventura Munitions for sending in the ammo that we use today. Thank you as usual to Blue Alpha Gear. Guys, we are getting crushed by YouTube. We are getting demonetized left and right. Literally hundreds of our videos have been demonetized by YouTube. Please help us out at patreon.com slash TFBTV. If you're at the five or $10 level, you are automatically entered to win a gun every single month. Thanks for watching. See you next week.